Okay. Now let's come to how can we generate X-rays. So to understand this, first we'll have to understand uh, structure of atom a little bit. What are electron orbits and their binding energies and partic particulate radiation. So structure of an atom, I, I guess everybody uh, knows this. So you have the uh, neutron, I mean you have the nucleus uh, which has neutrons and protons and there are electrons surrounding it. Actually, actually in reality this is how uh, an atom can be visualized or this is a better way of showing an atom because in, in reality we cannot we, we don't know what's the position of the electron it's so either you can find the position of the electron or its momentum in, or in some sense velocity and not both at the same time so it's in in general a probability distribution so what you can actually tell is it is more likely that an electron may lie over here in the black regions then it may lie on a white region but it has a small probability that electrons can be anywhere around the atom but it is more likely or highly likely that it will be on these black bands okay but this is more into quantum mechanics i won't touch that a lot for now this model is okay so the, the only reason i want to introduce this to you is that we will talk about probabilities a lot today so i mean there are different behaviors that an electron can exhibit and uh, we will see different behaviors based on probability so i just want to introduce you that it's it's a probability distribution we don't know where exactly the electron is okay so, so we will we will actually mostly for the entire lecture use this model only where we'll assume that we know the location of the electron but just keep in mind that is not true okay everybody okay with this okay okay so electron orbits so this is the nucleus it has different orbits so they are named as K, L, M, N, O and you can go till Z depending upon how many uh, electrons the element has and at every orbit there is a fixed number of electrons that can be there. Again this is probabilistic. So the probability of having two electrons in the K shell or the K orbit is the highest so it's more likely or the most likely for two electrons to be present in this particular orbit again there is this formula 2n square so this is the or the orbit number or the quantum orbit number 1 2 3 4 and based on that uh, so let's say when n is equal to 1 you can have so you just put n is equal to 1 over here and you get 2 into 1 square that is 2 so you just have 2 electrons or maximum you can just have 2 electrons in the first shell and so on uh, for the second you can have 8 for the third you can have 18 and so on okay let's say I want to remove this electron if I want to remove a particular electron from its shell I will have to supply energy and the question is how much energy so how much energy energy can i supply to remove this particular electron it turns out that depends on the attraction that it is facing from the nucleus so whatever the energy is it is it should be greater than the energy that is uh, by which the nucleus is attracting it and this particular uh, okay yeah so now this let's say is a free electron this electron is not facing any attraction hence we can consider that this is zero energy there is no attraction on this I mean th this is not under any influence of forces or attraction hence we can say this is having zero energy 
if I supply, let's say, one electron volt energy to this particular electron, it will move with a kinetic energy of one electron volts. Okay, uh, okay. So I have introduced. I have not introduced electron volts yet. Let us just quickly see what is electron volts. So we normally measure energy in joules. Everybody knows joules, right? So, so usually in quantum we use electron volts. The only reason is that's easier. Uh, you'll uh, you'll get to know about this again. But uh, just to introduce this. So let's say. Uh, I have this setup where I apply one volt and I am seeing uh, with one volt how how much energy does the electron get so it turns out when I supply one volt the electron will move with a kinetic energy of 1.6 into 10 raised to min minus 19 joules okay so this is what we call a electron volt. So it is basically the energy that an electron gets when one volt potential difference is applied across it. Everybody okay with this? Okay. So the beauty of this will be uh, evident in, in, in some time. Okay, so back to electron orbits and binding energy. So if I supply one electron volt of energy to this particular free electron, it will move with a kinetic energy of one electron volt. But if I want to move this electron that is in the shell, which is bound by the nucleus, then I will have to first supply energy so that I can bring it out of this bond and only then I can move it freely. So hence there is this concept that the energy or the energy that this particular electron has or these both of these electrons have is negative or less than zero because I have to supply some energy to make its energy zero because it's not a free electron. So this is a free electron. This has energy of zero. But this, for this, I will first have to apply some energy. Then it becomes free. That is, then it has zero energy. And only then I can supply some more energy so that it can move. So hence, uh, this is what is binding energy. So that's the energy which is binding the electron to the nucleus and these are represented as negative so this is let's say for a hydrogen atom so let's say this is a hydrogen atom this is the K shell the L shell and so on so if I want to remove an electron from the K shell of a hydrogen atom I will have to supply it 13.5 electron volts of energy only then it will become free and once it is free so here you can see here it is zero energy so once it is free only then I can supply some more energy so that it can move all okay with this concept all okay with why is this negative over here the binding energies are negative okay now if you see the binding energy changes with the I mean as the elements change which is quite intuitive right I mean tungsten has more number of protons so it has 74 protons so there is more force that is pulling the electron towards the nucleus so you will have to supply greater energy to break that force on the other hand hydrogen just has one proton in the nucleus hence it will I mean with a small amount of energy relative to tungsten you can break the force so the binding energy depends on the element oh yeah so it depends on the element that's the atomic number uh, it's negative that was the first point 
द सेकेंड पॉइंट इज इट बिकम्स लेस एज एन वेन वी गो अवे फ्रॉम द न्यूक्लियस अगेन दैट इज क्वाइट इंट्यूटिव बिकॉज द मोर अवे यू गो फ्रॉम द न्यूक्लियस द लेसर द इन्फ्लुएंस ऑफ न्यूक्लियस ओवर दैट इलेक्ट्रॉन ओके सो वाई why did i or why the textbook has just hydrogen and tungsten over here there is a big reason for that so uh, our bodies have a lot of water molecules which has hydrogen so that's the reason why hydrogen is a important element to study for medical imaging purposes and tungsten will be used for x ray generation and that's the reason why we you i mean why you you will usually see an example of tungsten for these uh, these kinds of studies okay all okay with this any problem any doubts any questions okay